Our adventure starts in the sea that makes up the Bristol Channel. It could be off Nash Point or near Worm's Head. And it is in one of these places that we meet our two young shadfish. Meet Jill. She's adventurous and fearless. Meet Jack. He's slightly timid. One day, Jack, we will go upriver to spawn. Hmm, yeah. Why do you need to go up the river? Yeah, we just spawn here in the sea. I don't know exactly why, but it was good enough for my parents and I sort of want to go back to where I was little. Over the next three years, our shad grew up. And then one spring, as the sun warmed up the sea, they both feel a pull to head up river. I long for the springtime warm waters. Way up river, away from the sea, and to lay our eggs in the lovely, clear waters. Come join us, it's time for an adventure. We're going up river to spawn. What if the water's too shallow? What if there's those mean fish catchers? Ugh, give me some personal space. As the shad swim up the river, all is going well. The high tide pushes them on. The estuary narrows and the water shallows until they meet a weir. <gasps> oh no! What's that terrible noise, Jill? Oh, Jack, what is it? Oh, is it a kind of wave? Is it a slide? Is it a kind of waterfall? Ah, there used to be so many more shad. Oh, then things changed. Old stories tell that the creatures above the water made lots and lots of smoke. Well, the smoke is mainly gone, though the weirs remain. Ah, but beyond them are rich prizes. Clear flowing waters, gravel beds, just perfect for our precious eggs to be protected before they hatch. I can't wait to get to the spawning ground. He'll never make it, we shad. Yeah, can he leap? Oh no, you'll have to wait until the high tide. We get a little help from the sea. Remember, find the flow. Come on, Jack. We can do this. Nearly there. Okay, Jill. Nearly there. If if you say so. Yes. Bye bye, little shad. The next weir is too far from the sea. The shad won't get any help from the tide. I'm stopping. Let's just spawn here. I don't think I can go on. Oh, Jack. We, we shouldn't just give up without trying. This will have to do. Remember, a salmon may be able to leap, but we can swim faster than them for our own size. And also, there is a helpful knot to cut into this weir. Follow me! Come on, you can do it. See, Jack, we can make it over these walls if we swim really hard. The shad continue upstream. But after another day of swimming, they hear a big rumble approaching. It's the biggest weir, Diglett's. Oh my goodness. For 170 years, the shad have only been able to get this far. But they still hear stories of the mystical river upstream of the big rumble. 
Jill, I just can't do it. We just need to find the flow jack. There may be a way through. I can't go on. Jack. Oh. Where does this lead? Come and see, Jill. Oh, Jack, what is it? I, I feel as if I could easily swim this way. The fish pass is 100 metres long, the length of a football pitch. And it could fit 36 double-decker buses inside. Look, look, what's that fish? Isn't that a shad, maybe? And look, these are the first two shad to use the pass. They are pioneers. No gills to breathe? No tails or fins? <laughs> what funny looking creatures. They look like they're trapped behind that glass. These shad will find better conditions to lay their eggs and they will consequently produce more young who will all head out back to sea. Adult shad can return up to five more times. And each year, more shad will tell the other fish that they can once more move above the great rumble. They can use the passes to get to their old historic spawning grounds. And it was just as they had been told, a heaven for raising young. In, In the end, end, we, we both helped each, each other find a new way through. While I learned to be more optimistic about things changing. And I learnt that I have lots and lots of grandchildren. Hi, Granny! Hi, Granny! Hi, Granny! Hi, And we learnt that if you have an idea, you can make it happen and make the world a better place.